Welcome to our Chinese Finance and Economy Briefing Program. Today, we have a trio of fascinating stories that are shaping the landscape of Chinese business and society. First up, SAIC Motor is in the spotlight as it grapples with a hefty 37.6% EU tariff on its electric vehicle exports. The Shanghai-based carmaker is pushing back, requesting a hearing to present its case, arguing that the European Commission overlooked crucial information during their investigation. This tariff hike is part of a broader EU move to counter underpriced Chinese EVs with state subsidies, a decision that has significant implications for the automotive market. Next, we turn our attention to Hunan province, where heavy rains have caused a dike breach in Lake Dongting, China's second-largest freshwater lake. The breach, which has doubled in size to 220 meters, has led to the emergency evacuation of nearly 6,000 residents from Huarong County. Fortunately, no casualties have been reported, but the floods have affected over 364,000 people and resulted in 27 deaths, with eight still missing. Lastly, let's dive into the world of fast fashion, where Chinese e-commerce giant Shine is making waves. Based in Guangzhou, Shine has built a formidable network of small manufacturers, allowing it to restock in just seven days. This agility has helped it compete with global giants like Amazon and H&M. As Shine eyes an IPO in the UK, it faces increasing scrutiny and competition but remains a key player in China's digital silk road strategy for global e-commerce. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage of these stories. South China Morning Post, SAIC Motor, China's largest carmaker, is grappling with a hefty 37.6% tariff on its electric vehicle exports to Europe, the highest rate imposed by the European Union. The company has requested a hearing to contest the tariff, arguing that the European Commission made errors in its anti-subsidy investigation, particularly by misclassifying domestic incentives as export subsidies. The tariff affects not only SAIC but also the Volkswagen and General Motors EVs assembled in China. Despite these challenges, SAIC remains optimistic about its overseas sales, projecting to sell 1 million milligrams cars abroad by 2024, with 30% being electric. The company has also ordered 12 large vessels to boost its export capacity. Meanwhile, the EU and China are still in negotiations, with a final decision expected in November. South China Morning Post, a dike breach in Dongting Lake, China's second-largest freshwater lake, has caused a massive emergency evacuation in Hunan province due to severe flooding from torrential rains. The breach widened from 100 meters to 220 meters overnight, prompting the evacuation of nearly 6,000 people. Over 2,000 relief workers and 610 boats have been mobilized for rescue efforts, and President Xi Jinping has called for all-out rescue and relief operations. The floods have affected more than 364,000 people, destroyed farmlands, and caused significant infrastructure damage in the region. Flooding is expected to persist in the Yangtze River Basin and other major rivers in China, with extreme weather conditions contributing to the crisis. Top government officials have visited the affected areas to oversee the relief efforts and minimize losses. South China Morning Post, Guangzhou, historically known as Canton, has transformed into a hub for fast fashion giants like Shine, leveraging its extensive network of factories and the internet. Shine, headquartered in the town of Nansuan, has built a vast supply chain network, ensuring timely payments to suppliers and maintaining a fast and flexible production system. Despite initial reluctance from manufacturers due to small order sizes and tight deadlines, Shine has managed to secure a reliable supplier base, allowing it to offer a wide range of affordable fashion items. The company's success hinges on its agile supply chain and digital management system, which enables rapid restocking. As Shine prepares for an IPO, it faces scrutiny from international markets and competition from rivals like Amazon and Temu. The company aims to diversify its product offerings to sustain growth and capture a larger market share. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 do brief via email.
Money flowing like a river, stocks to rise and sometimes shiver. Economy goes up and down. In this game, we wear the crown. Startups popping like the news. Crypto fashion headline views. Diversify your gains of play. Ride the wave, don't miss the day. Markets moving, never still. Cash in hand.